on the vlog again. Just can't wait to do a vlog again. The life I love is making vlogs for my friends. And I can't wait to do a vlog again. Doing a vlog again. Going places that I've never been. Seeing things that I may never see again. Hello everyone and welcome back to The Top Vloggers. As always, I am your host, Hi and Mighty Joe, hanging out with... Your co-host, the lovely cat. And as you can see, we have Aaron in the back. It is going to be another great vlog. This one is all about the history of Bunker Hill. It should be fun and exciting and very educational. You can join us on all of our social media websites, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Top Vloggers. Also, if you'd like to help us reach the top, you can do so by going to www.patreon.com backslash The Top Vloggers. Without your help and support, these vlogs would be almost impossible to do. There will be a link in the description below. And if you are new here, don't forget, you can hit that subscribe button, take it one step further, and ring the notification bell. It'll keep you up to date on all the future adventures that will be going on on our channel. So let's get going. Today's adventure brings us to Bunker Hill, Indiana, home of the Minutemen. Let's go take a walk around and tell you a little bit more about it. Bunker Hill is a town in Pipe Creek Township, Miami County, in the U.S. state of Indiana. The population was 888 at the 2010 census. Bunker Hill was platted in 1851 by James Myers, John Duckwall and Alexander Galbraith. A post office opened in 1859. The Van Handel Railroad came to Bunker Hill in 1868. Minutemen were civilian colonists who independently organized to form well-prepared militia companies, self-trained in weaponry, tactics, and military strategies from the American colonial partisan militia during the American Revolutionary War. They were also known for being ready at a minute's notice, hence the name. They provided a highly mobile, rapidly deployed force that allowed colonies to respond immediately to war threats. The Minutemen were among the first to fight in the American Revolution. Their teams constituted about a quarter of the entire militia. They were generally younger and more mobile and served as part of a network for early response. The term has also been applied to various later United States civilian based paramilitary forces to recall the success of the, and patriotism of the originals. In the British colony of Massachusetts Bay, all able-bodied men between the ages of 16 and 60 were required to participate in their local militia as early as 1645 in the Massachusetts Bay Colony some men were selected from the general ranks of town-based trading brands to be for rapid deployment men so selected were designated as Minutemen they were usually drawn from settlers of each town and so it was very common for them to be fighting alongside relatives and friends Some towns in Massachusetts had a long history of designating a portion of their militia as Minutemen with Minute Companies constituting a special units within the militia system whose members underwent additional training and held themselves ready to turn out rapidly for emergencies at a minute's notice and hence their name. Other towns such as Lexington preferred to keep their entire militia in a single unit. Members of the Minutemen by contrast were no more than 30 years old and were chosen for their enthusiasm, political reliability, and strength. They were the first armed militia to arrive at or await a battle. Officers were elected by popular vote as in the rest of the militia, and each unit drafted a formal written covenant to be signed upon enlistment. The militia typically assembled as an entire unit in each town two to four times a year for training during peacetime. But as the inevitability of war became apparent, the militia trained three to four times a week. In this organization, it was common for officers to make decisions through con consultation and consensus with their men, as opposed to giving orders to be followed without question. The Massachusetts Provincial Congress found that the colony's militia resources were short just before the American 
Revolutionary War on October 26, 1774. After observing the British military buildup, they found that including the sick and absent, it amounted to be about 17,000 men, far short of the number wanted. That the council recommended at an immediate application to the New England governments to make up the deficiency, resolving to organize the militia better. The Massachusetts Provincial Congress recommended to the militia to form themselves into companies of Minutemen who should be equipped and prepared to march at the shortest notice. These Minutemen were comprised one quarter of the whole militia to be enlisted under the direction of the field officers and divide into companies consisting of at least 50 men each. The privates were to choose their captains and subalterns and these officers were to form the companies into battalions and choose the field officers to command the same. Hence the Minutemen became a body distinct from the rest of the militia and by being more devoted to military exercises they acquired skill in use of arms. More attention than formerly was likewise bestowed on the training and drilling of the militia. The need for efficient Minutemen companies was illustrated by the power, powder alarm of 1774. Militia companies were called out to resist British troops who were sent to capture ammunition stores. By the time the militia was ready, the British regulars had already captured the arms at Cambridge and Charleston Town and had returned to Boston. In August 1636, the offensive military attacks by a militia failed when Massachusetts dispatched John Endicott with four companies on an unsuccessful campaign against the Pico Indians. According to one man's account, the expedition succeeded only in killing one Indian and burning some wigwams. Weeks elapsed between the incident that caused the march and the arrival of Endicott's men in the area. Once they got there, they did not know which Indians to fight or why. This feeble response served to encourage the Indians and attacks increased on settlers in the Connecticut Valley. Well, thank you so much for coming on this vlog. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Uh, it has been very emotional today. Uh, as you guys may have uh, may remember, uh, the lovely cat was raised by her grandmother and uh, her grandmother today was uh, put into a nursing facility. Uh, so it has been a very hard day for the lovely cat, that is for sure, and uh, for all of us here. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Um, as you can see, it's getting dark outside, so I believe that wraps it up for us here today. We'll be back with another vlog for you tomorrow, just for you. Until then, top vloggers.